Chapter 14, Island of the Blue Dolphins My leg hurt so much by the time I had reached the house that it was hard for me to crawl under the fence and move aside the heavy rock. For five suns, I could not go out because my leg had swollen so badly, and I had no herbs with which to treat it. I had enough food to eat, but on the third day, the water in the basket ran low. Two days later, the basket was empty. It was necessary then for me to go out to the spring in the ravine. I started out when the sun rose. I took with me shellfish to eat, also my spear and my bow and arrows. I went very slowly, for I had to crawl on my hands and knees, carrying the food tied to my back and dragging the weapons. There was a short way to the spring, but it was over many rocks, which I could not climb. So I had to take the longer way through the brush. I reached the ravine when the sun was overhead. The spring was not far off, and I rested there. Though I was very thirsty, cutting a lobe from a cactus brush to chew on. While I was resting there, sucking the juice from the cactus, I saw the big gray dog, the leader of the wild pack, in the brush above me. His head was down and he was moving slowly, sniffing the tracks I had made. He, w he saw me soon after I saw him and stopped. Behind him was the rest of the pack, trotting along one after the other. The pack stopped too. I took my bow and fitted an arrow. But as I did this, the big dog faded away into the brush and was quickly followed by the others. In the time of one breath, they had gone. There was nothing to aim my arrow at. It was as if they had been not been there at all. I listened. They were moving so silently I could not hear their steps. But I was sure that they would try to surround me. Slowly I crawled on, stopping to listen, to glance back, to measure the distance between me and the spring. My leg hurt. I left my bow and arrows behind as I went on for the brush had grown heavy and I could not use them. In one hand I dragged my spear. I came to the spring. It flowed out of the crack in the rock, and the rock rose high on three sides of it. The wild dogs could not attack me from any of these directions, so I lay on the earth and drank. Watching the ravine below, I drank for a long time and filled my basket, and then feeling better, crawled toward the mouth of the cave. The ledge of black rock ran out above it. Some low bushes grew there, and among them, with just his head showing, stood the big gray dog. He did not move, but his yellow eyes followed me, turning slowly as I drew near the cave. Another head showed behind him, and then another. They were too far away for me to reach with my spear. Suddenly, I saw brush moving on the opposite side of the ravine. The pack had split up and were waiting on both sides of the ravine for me to pass them. The cave was now in front of me. I crawled to the mouth and into it. Above me I could hear feet running and the crackling of brush, which was followed by silence. I was safe. I knew the wild dogs would come back, and they did at nightfall, stalking around in the brush until morning, but not venturing close. Although the mouth of the cave was small, once you were inside, it spread out and you could stand up. Water dropping from the roof in the cave was cold without a fire. But here I stayed for six suns until my leg was well, crawling out only once to fetch water from the spring. While I was living there, I decided I would make the cave into another house where I could stay should I get hurt, or sick again, and this I did as soon as I was strong and could walk. The cave went far back into the hill, away around many turns, but I needed only that part which lay near the opening and which the sun could reach during some of the day. A long time before this, my ancestors had used the cave, why I do not know, and along the walls on each side they had cut figures in the stone. There were figures of pelicans floating on the water and flying, of dolphins, whales, sea elephants, gulls, 
ravens, dogs, and foxes. Near the opening of the cave, they had also cut two deep brazens in the stone, which I decided to use for storing water, since they held much more than the baskets. I made shelves in the side of the rock as I had done in the other house and gathered shellfish and seeds to store there. I also gathered herbs from the hill above the spring in case I should need them. The bow and arrows I had first made I likewise took to the cave. At the last, after I had made a good bed of seaweed and collected dry wood for many fires, I closed the opening with stones except for a small hole at the top which I could crawl through. All this I did thinking of the days I had been sick and without water. It was hard work, but of it as man's work, but not until I finished did I go back to the place where the sea elephants lived. The tide was low when I reached it. Far up on the slope lay the body of an old bull. Gulls had picked his bones clean, but I found what I had come for. Some of the teeth were as long as my hand and half its width. They were curved at the tops and some were broken. But when I had ground the best of them down with sand, I had for my work four good spears, broad at the bottom and very sharp at the ends. I, I made two more spears from these points, and at last was ready to go to the cave of the wild dogs. After reading the chapter today, I would like you to fill out this, which I will email to you in about 10 minutes. It's on character changes. Now, Karina is a much different person now that we're in the middle of the book than she was at the very beginning of the book. The first thing you're to do is draw a picture or a portrait of Karina and then list the conflicts or some of the conflicts that she's faced since the beginning of the book. Down here write how did these conflicts change her. You may need to use the back. If you prefer to use the back to draw a picture of her you may do that too. If you get a chance and you can send me a picture of it. Have fun with this and have a good weekend.